Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're gonna to conduct another experiment. We're going to install Windows XP Professional on my WISE VX0 Thin Client. That's right, not Windows XP Embedded like it was designed for, Windows XP Professional. And to assist us with this, I'll be using an external DVD drive. You could use an external CD drive if you wanted. I'll be using an external DVD drive. And speaking of the installation procedure, unlike past videos, this isn't going to be a tutorial video, but I will put a link below to all the drivers used in case you want to repeat this experiment, as well as if you follow along with the video, you'll see just how you can do this for yourself. So, First, we're going to have a look at the installation. Then from there, we'll have a look at some performance aspects. It won't be too scientific, but it will be something. And then finally, I'll give you my out brief or my take on this experiment. So without further ado, let's go. Before we get to installing, we need to change the boot order in the BIOS. I've hooked in my external CD-ROM drive and on system startup pressed delete to get to this point and am entering the password FIREPORT with capital F. Once the password is entered, I go to advanced BIOS setup and go to the first boot device and make sure it is the USB CD-ROM selection and make sure the second boot device is hard disk. Perfect. From there I hit escape and can go over to save and exit setup and hit Y and the system will now boot from my Windows XP CD. We can press any key to boot from CD when prompted. And we will see Windows Setup run. To get to the point where we can make changes, it takes five minutes. But once we get here, we can press Enter to set up XP, F8 to agree to the license, and we need to delete the existing partition, so I hit D to delete it, then enter, and then L, and then I can hit C to create a new partition, and I want it to be the maximum size, so enter, and then we can press enter on that partition. And from here, I'm going to choose NTFS file system quick. And from here, the disk will format and files will copy. And this takes a grand total of 25 minutes to complete. So. It's actually very slow, unfortunately. And that seems to be a theme with this machine today. More on that in the end. But after waiting 25 minutes, it does finish and we are at a point where the computer will reboot and it will boot into Windows XP to continue the setup process. After the reboot, we're presented with this graphical portion of install. And after 10 minutes, we'll be prompted to put in our name and CD key and select our region. So here we are. So we can hit next and put in our name and take us to the next screen, put in our product key. And from there you can put in the computer name as well. And after doing that, we can go ahead and put in our time zone. So that's our next option here once it gets there. So I'll select my time zone and then hit next. Okay. So at this point, we get to sit back a little bit, and I think there's another dialogue that pops in there where you get to put in your network settings, but this portion of install does take 30 minutes. So it will go ahead and wrap up. Before too terribly long here, we can see the countdown on the left, and lo and behold, it finishes, and it does a second boot into graphical and tries to select a better display resolution. Perfect. So we'll let this run its course. And we'll be greeted with a nice Windows XP welcome with a nice effects, which, well, display as good as they can anyway. So now we get to go through the setup wizard where we are welcomed to Windows. I am not going to help to protect my PC because all of the Windows updates, I believe, are along offline for this version of Windows. My internet connectivity will be checked and will succeed. So after that, we can say this computer will connect through a local area network and I'm not going to activate Windows at this time because I don't think I'm going to keep this installed on the system. Anyway, from here you can put in your name. 
So I'll put that in and we can click next. So at this point, I think we should be wrapped up so we can click on the finish button and it will boot to the desktop five minutes later. But eventually it does boot to the desktop and we can continue the process. Sets up the desktop update amongst other things and here we are presented with a nice open start menu. Perfect. At this point, we can go ahead and look at which devices have yellow exclamation points. I'm not doing this the smartest way, but you can go to control panel and look at the system item. I could have just right clicked on my PC and looked at the device manager, but that's fine. We'll go to the hardware tab and we can go to device manager. And we will see we have two yellow exclamation points, one for the multimedia audio controller and one for video. So I went ahead and copied the device drivers to the desktop. I suggest doing the same and we can proceed to do installation. First, we'll start with the Via Vinyl audio drivers. So let's go ahead and run setup for that. And once again, run this from the desktop, especially this driver because it gets really confused if you try to run it from another drive. So we'll go ahead and next, next, next through this and do our agreements and everything we need to do so that we can get to the end and let it install. And it will be successful if, once again, you ran it from the same drive. Otherwise, it will fail. How do I know? I already tried it and it failed, both on 98 and on XP. So that's the thing to do. Okay, so we'll see it go ahead and wrap up the installation here before too terribly long. And once it finishes, what we can go ahead and do is Restart the computer as prompted, but fortunately installation was a success. So that's always a good thing. Once restarted, we'll head back up to that drivers folder on the desktop and we'll go ahead and install the four in one drivers. This provides some device drivers, I believe for some hardware components, uh, nothing in particular, but more of a chipset driver, if you will. So, We'll go ahead and install this. It's pretty quick. And then from there, we can restart the computer, but I'm going to say no. Looks like this was for the AGP and for the IDE. So with that installed, I'm going to install the rest of the chipset drivers using the Hyperion Pro installer. So we'll find the setup program for this and go ahead and run through this as well. And once this finishes, then we'll go ahead and do a restart. So. Once restarted again, the only other item to install are video drivers. And to do this, we need to go to Device Manager. So you can see me doing that, or at least trying. So we'll go to My Computer and Properties, and then we can go to Device Manager. I'm gonna close these XP balloons. They are numerous. I think XP kind of abused the balloons. Anyway, we can see we have our video controller, which I can click on, and then click on Reinstall Driver. And we'll say No for Windows Update. Install from a list or specified location or specific location. Don't search. I will choose the driver to install. So from there, we'll select display adapters and then click next. And the system will pause for just a minute and will then prompt us with some other options here that we will see. And once we reach this screen, we can click have disk and browse and then browse to the desktop and we will find the display adapters folder that we have which is this bottom one here, and navigate in until we find this UC04R file. Click open and then click OK. And magically, our S3 Unichrome Pro IGP will be detected. We can click Next and then Yes to continue installing despite the warning. And finally, we're all set. We can click Finish and then Close. And all yellow exclamation points are gone. Perfect. We'll close Device Manager and System Properties. And hey, let's go ahead and change the resolution now that we can. So I'll go ahead and bump this up to, I don't know, 1024 by 768. That sounds like a nice resolution for Windows XP, if I do say so myself. We'll apply, and now we will, after a short period of time, have a nice desktop here, which will resize. There you have it, a nice resized desktop. So next up, let's see how usable the system is. 3D Pinball seems to play pretty smoothly at full screen, so that's a check mark. Good. I'm not very good at the game, but I can at least play it. 
and it does seem to play successfully, so that's good. Next up, I'll go ahead and load some applications quickly just to see what they look like. We'll go ahead and load Internet Explorer and see how quickly that loads. And the program itself seems to load pretty quickly, so we'll call that good. Let's load Outlook Express, why not? And that also seems to load pretty quickly, so that's good as well. So yeah, we've loaded a couple of programs despite our limited memory. This is all good. Let's go ahead and load a game like Solitaire, and that seems to load pretty fast as well. Good. So I'll go ahead and close these down just because I just wanted to illustrate we could load a couple of programs and it's not painfully slow. Let's also have a look at a screensaver. So I'll go to Properties and then I'll go to Screensaver and we'll pick the 3D Flower Box and just do a preview on that and see how well it does. It doesn't do great, but the system doesn't really struggle to display it. So I guess that's something as well. We'll take it. Great. Next, I wanted to try some additional productivity, so I installed Office XP. It did take a 10 minute time period to install, which I guess isn't too bad. We'll take it. From there, I went ahead and launched PowerPoint, as you'll see here. And I wanted to just basically create a quick slide. I'll give it a little design so it takes some degree of CPU intensity. So we'll pick one of these nice templates here and apply it to all slides type in a little bit of text here, just a test. And I would say this is not too bad. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we can go to full screen slideshow mode. And yeah, it seems to do pretty good. So you could use this for productivity. It's not too bad. From there, I thought I would try Microsoft Word because why not? And launching Word and doing some typing is not too bad. So once again, for productivity, this really isn't all that bad. So I thought I would also try to run Passmark Utilities. I tried to load version 9 of Performance Test, and eh, this is what I got. So I stepped back to version 8, and it seemed to do a pretty good job of installing. And then from there, I was able to load it. It does not run fast on this machine, but it does at least load. Once loaded, I wanted to run the benchmarks right away, but eh, not yet. Performance Test was still gathering metrics. so. We let that go ahead and finish doing its thing. Sometime later, we were ready to run the benchmark, and this process took 17 minutes, but it did give us some results, and oh boy, the results are really something, a score of 3.3. So pretty much as close to zero as you can get, which makes me wonder what we're comparing against, and yeah, there's no comparison. This little Eden 800 megahertz can't go up against this Core 2 Duo or Phenom or Core i7 by any step of the imagination. I guess those machines would also run XP, so that's your competition, folks. Anyway, as we look at the summary, yeah, we can see how it stacks up where it earned its 3.3 and the graphics earned its 28.5. We won't even look at graphic metrics today. And memory mark didn't place, disk mark barely placed. Not too terrible. I think that the fake CD that I had in the CD-ROM drive helped. So looking at CPU mark, you can see where we didn't even place in some cases and barely placed in lots of others with very, very low scores. However, there's one category that did stand out as having a very high score, which makes me question this test on the Via Eden CPU line. Or maybe it's just that my XP machine doesn't have enough memory, but look at that physics and how it stood out. There's no way that it beat the socks off of all of those other machines. So there's that as well. Take everything you see with a grain of salt. Okay, so there you have it. Installation and rudimentary performance testing complete. What's my final take? Well, in my opinion, I'd probably go with something else. I think you need a little more powerful machine to run Windows XP. Despite the fact that the minimum system requirements for XP were a Pentium 233 with 64 megabytes of memory, I think that you might as well grab something more powerful if you're trying to create a retro XP machine. Or alternatively, I think another experiment we should try is installing XP embedded on this. But when it comes to regular XP, my advice to you is 
don't be a wise guy. All right, well, that's what we had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, there will be more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is available. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. If you have some feedback on the video, please do leave a comment below. I love interacting with my subscribers and that's my favorite part of the whole channel. So definitely comment below. Otherwise, as always, it's been great having you along for the journey. And I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.